Welcome to your first video of the school year where I am going to attempt to explain one-sided limits to you with two examples from your homework, 73 and 79. To me, a one-sided limit kind of can be in two categories. If your one-sided limit is approaching an asymptote, and it doesn't matter which side it's approaching from, then your answer is either going to be positive or negative infinity. However, if your one-sided limit is approaching a y value, whether that is a continuous y value or a discontinuous y, um, y value, aka a whole, then it really doesn't matter if you're approaching from the left or from the right. Your answer is going to be the same, and it's almost like you can ignore that little plus or minus up there on the right. So let's look at the first example, um, a rational expression. Um, we've got a limit as x approaches one from the left. So the first thing I'm going to do is see if I have an asymptote or a whole. And to do that, I'm going to factor the numerator into x plus 1 quantity squared over x minus 1. And you can see from this that um, there is no removable discontinuity. In other words, I can't cross through anything. So there is a, an asymptote at x equals 1. We could go to the trouble of graphing this. I think if you see the graph, then you can see what the limit is approaching from the left. And we may look at this both ways. But first of all, I'm going to talk about what would happen if we didn't have the graph. So something that is to the left of 1, is it going to make this value positive or negative? That's the big key here. Um, I don't want to go more than one integer away. So in this case, to the left of 1, I'm going to pick 0.9. If I put 0.9 in the numerator, I'm going to get a positive value. And if I put 0.9 in the denominator, I'm going to get a negative value. And that quotient is negative. And so from this, I know that this limit is negative infinity. In other words, the graph as x approaches 1 from the left is going to negative infinity. I think it's also nice because we've got this situation. Let's go ahead and talk about what the graph of this looks like. We have an asymptote at 1, x equals 1. Uh, we have um, an x-intercept at negative 1. And because of this um, even exponent, I know that I'm not going to have a sign change at 1. I'm actually going to have um, a, a bouncing x-intercept. Uh, more power on top. So with more power on top, if you remember, that is your oblique or slant asymptote. I'm going into a lot more detail than we need to just answer this problem, but why not? So if we do a little long division here, note we could do synthetic, but I think I'd rather put us through long division. x goes into x squared x times. I have x squared minus x when I distribute that through. Changing the signs here, I get 3x plus 1. x goes into 3x three times. And after that, I know that I'm going to have a remainder that x will not go into. So my slant or oblique asymptote is just y equals x plus 3. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And there's my oblique asymptote. So what does this graph look like? Well, I'm either going to be above or below my asymptote. My horizontal or oblique asymptotes, you get used to the fact that I call those guides to infinity. And I also realize that I have omitted um, my y-intercept, which is really important. I took the time to get the x-intercept. Let's look at the y. If I put 0 in for x, I have 1 in the numerator. If I put 0 in for y, I have negative 1. So there's my y-intercept. So because I have permission to either bounce or cross uh, below, here's what my graph looks like. So I'm going to come up like this and down like that. And then to the right of my asymptote, I have this little kind of sideways U to deal with. Okay, so now let's go back and answer the question without any 
plugging in. As x approaches 1 from the left, you can see clearly that you're going to negative infinity. If this was from the right, you'd be going to positive infinity. And as x approaches 1 from no direction, but just as x approaches 1, because they don't go to the same thing, then you would say d and e, or does not exist. Let's take a look at 79, and 79 comes off of this, I, this limit that I hope Ms. Prine was able to introduce to you last year, that the sine of x over x as x goes to 0 is 1. Um, it's a cool little graph. There's a hole up here at 1, and it just looks like a sine graph, but it trails off to 0 as you go to positive and negative infinity. So bottom line, to get this to be 1, the argument of sine and the denominator have to be exactly alike. And I can't change that 4x, but I can sure change the 5. So if I multiply the denominator by 4 fifths and the numerator by 4 fifths, and come down here, I have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 4 fifths times the sine of 4x divided by 4x. And this limit from either direction is 1. So 4 fifths times 1 is 4 fifths. And this problem wouldn't matter if it was approaching from the right or from the left or it's just x approaches 0. We know that the, on the graph, um, as x approaches 0, there is a hole at y equals 4 fifths. Hopefully this helps. If not, I'll be here all day today, tomorrow, and we'll see you on Friday.